Hello, my name is Vandakini Saroop and I'm a second year student at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth and a fellow at the Center for Digital Strategies. Uh, I have with me today Adam Mayer, who's the Vice President of Intelligent Home at Time Warner Cable. He is here today as part of the Brit Technology Series and Tech at Tuck. I'm going to start off with asking you to talk a little bit about Intelligent Home and what made you decide to take Time Warner Cable into the connected home space? Intelligent Home is Time Warner Cable's home management service mm -hmm. that provides next generation home security, mm -hmm. energy management, and home automation. So it provides our customers with everything you would expect from a traditional home security system. We have our own monitoring center mm -hmm. that dispatches fire, police, or medical based on the emergency at hand. Um, but it also provides you much more. So even on the home security side, there's lots of cool technologies that we can offer the customer because we deliver this product over our broadband pipe. Mm -hmm. So that allows you to remotely control your system from a smartphone or from your tablet or from your uh, computer. Mm -hmm. um, we have cameras you can put in the home so you can actually see what's going on live or recorded video. That's in the home, again, from your iPhone or your Android device. Um, you also are able to control your thermostats um, or lamp modules um, or in-wall lighting. Um, so in fact, what we're doing here is Intelligent Home is really a platform to enable lots of different home management verticals and products and services for our customer. The home security business has been relatively stagnant in terms of innovation for the past 30 years. My parents have a home security system in their home and they've had the same one for 30 years and I look at what's out there today and it's actually very similar. With Intelligent Home, again, it's not just a product, it, it's a platform, it's an ecosystem that we've made, we've used very open standards and, and protocols so that lots of partners, whether it's hardware or software, can come in and quickly innovate and add new products, new verticals onto this platform to give to our customers. So Time Warner Cable likes to get into businesses where there's lots of room for innovation and that there's more platform types, types of services that you can add on additional features and products. My next question is about your growth strategies. Um, obviously the home market is, I mean, it is fairly limited. So how do you see yourself expanding? Like would it be into new segments or would you grow internationally maybe? Intelligent Home is not a single product. It's an ecosystem, it's a platform. Mm -hmm. And we purposely did that because we don't know, to be honest, what the next huge home management vertical might be. Mm -hmm. So energy management, for example, we think is gonna be big. Mm -hmm. Home healthcare is gonna be big. Wearables you hear a lot about today. Right. But to be honest, I'm not gonna sit here and say this is the one that's gonna take off. So our strategy has been to work with partners to make sure that our platform is as open and flexible as possible so that when the new vertical or the new demand from consumers around whatever that um, you know, space is, we can quickly integrate into our product and offer it to our customers. Mm -hmm. So our growth plan for Intelligent Home is really to expand in this space around you know, home management. Obviously, this is like home security and there's video feeds involved and mm -hmm. I'm sure that's got a lot of people concerned about their privacy and how Time Warner is keeping all that information secure. So could you talk a little about how you think about securing this? Sure, sure, absolutely. This was an issue from day one. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, we actually haven't heard as many complaints mm -hmm. from our customers or concerns than we, as we thought we would. We are unable to see those cameras even if we wanted to. In fact, uh, a year ago or so, there was a burglary that occurred. Uh, the camera picked it up, and I believe, I remember correctly, the customer deleted the video, either accidentally or she didn't realize she had it, and the police wanted us to give them the video, but we couldn't because we don't even allow our technicians or our um, call center to access that video even if we wanted to. So obviously Time Warner has all this information about when a user is at home and when they're not, and um, and I guess when they're turning up their thermostat and when they're not. Um, have you thought about maybe collaborating with energy companies or utility companies to figure out how to distribute power across a city or a grid as opposed to every user? Sure, management? so first of all, I just wanna clarify, Time Warner Cable doesn't have that data, the customer has the data. So we're not collecting data on when customers come in and out of the house and when they change the thermostat. The customers, though, can access their website mm -hmm. and can see exactly what the history happened in their house or what their thermostat temperature was. So mm -hmm. we don't have access to that. That being said, we definitely think enabling the consumer 
to change their thermostat and to turn on and off their lights definitely provides us with some unique opportunities to give customers more control of their energy and mm -hmm. ways that we could potentially save them more money. For example, there's, there's thoughts out there that if a customer agrees, we can implement an algorithm that would in fact slightly make changes to their thermostat mm -hmm. in order to save them some sort of monthly fee. You know, they have to agree to that, of course. This is all mm -hmm. you know, after a customer signs off on it. We wouldn't do this without their permission. Um, so there's definitely opportunities there. There are also opportunities of working with utilities mm -hmm. who spend a lot of money and effort trying to smooth out their um, delivery curve of when they deliver energy because it costs them money to handle peaks and, and troughs. Uh, so if we can work with them and the customer to provide that in an easier way, there's, we think there's value for everyone along that chain. So definitely energy management is a big opportunity for us. Um, and we're just trying to figure out exactly what the right play is. Now you mentioned that you're not interested in getting into the business of making your own devices and you just want to have other partners maybe who are providing these devices. So getting these devices to communicate is obviously the big thing mm -hmm. in the Internet of Things. So ha do you have an open source communication protocol mm -hmm. or are you part of an alliance that yep. has? So Intelligent Home, all the devices are based on either Wi-Fi, they communicate via Wi-Fi, or, or a wireless protocol called Zigbee, mm -hmm. which is a, traditionally it's been a home automation protocol. Um, we've, we've introduced it into home security as well with Intelligent Home. And what's great about Zigbee is a few things. Number one is it is a completely open platform, mm -hmm. so anyone can build to it, and, and, and that's exactly our strategy. We want to encourage as many hardware manufacturers and software, manufa software developers or app developers to build to our platform. So Zigbee enables that. Our, also our software platform, we put out DDKs and, and it's open APIs so that anyone can come and build to it. There is of course some level of certification. We don't want anyone, you know, because there is life safety involved here, we can't risk having anyone be able to build to it. But we're trying to keep it as the, the, the burdens to be as low as possible within reason. Again, we can't compromise safety or security of our customers, mm -hmm. but we certainly want them to be able to add as many devices as possible. I certainly could envision a time where customers could go buy their own devices from a Home Depot or a Lowe's or a Best Buy, mm -hmm. and it may have a intelligent home capable or compatible mm -hmm. logo on it, and they can just self-install it and use it themselves. And that would be fantastic because it makes life easier for them, mm -hmm. it increases the value of intelligent home, and that, it, that and, and, it, and it works well for the manufacturers and retailers as well. Final question, um, where do you see the see the connected home market heading? Like, do you think it's reached its peak with home security or do you see things like, I don't know, toasters on the internet as somebody put it? Right, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, it is certainly much more than home security. If it was just home security, we would not have been in this space. The only reason that we entered it is because we think it's much more than home security. Um, you know, not uh, what is, is it's going to be toasters on the internet? Is that going to be the huge popular app? I don't know. I mean, we have hunches. Like I said, I think energy management is really big. I think health and wellness will be really big. Mm -hmm. I think there's some really interesting presence-based mm -hmm. applications that looks, you know, the customer, for example, if I have my cell phone and I get within five feet of my home, mm -hmm. turn on the lights and unlock my door, right? Things like that I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm not ready to sit here and say, this is what the killer app is going to be. Okay. And that's why our strategy is to make sure that our platform and our ecosystem is as open and flexible as possible so that someone else, you know, who will encourage innovation. And when they see, wow, this is what customers are demanding, we can say, great, add it onto our platform. It's really easy just to follow these quick, easy steps, and we're good to go. So that, that's really the intelligent home strategy. Adam, on behalf of the Center for Digital Strategies at Tuff, I'd like to thank you for speaking to us today. Your thoughts and opinions were really helpful to all our listeners. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. This has been Mandakini Saroop for the Center for Digital Strategies at Tuff School of Business at Dartmouth.